here and of course it's blood uh, in the red cells, I'll just draw some red cells there in the capillary. Now the air is relatively high in O2. The blood delivered in the pulmonary artery to the lungs is relatively low in O2. That's the whole reason it's going there, to pick up some oxygen. So you have fairly high levels of O2 in the alveoli, but you have fairly low levels of O2 in the pulmonary arterial blood. And this means that we've got more oxygen there than we've got there. In other words, the concentrations are unequal. There's more here than here. And this means we've got what is called a diffusion gradient. The concentration of oxygen is greater in the alveoli than it is in the capillary. And remember the ink moved from areas where there was a lot of red ink to areas where there was not much red ink. So the oxygen in this case will want to move from where there's a lot of oxygen here to where there's not much here to try and make the concentrations equal on both sides. In other words, th there's a diffusion gradient between here and here. And what happens is oxygen will tend to move down the diffusion gradient to try and make the amount of oxygen here the same as here. The net result of this process is that oxygen will diffuse from the alveoli into the blood where it can be carried back by the pulmonary venous circulation to the left atrium where it can be pumped around the body. And the converse is true with carbon dioxide. CO2 levels are fairly high when the blood arrives in the pulmonary capillary. And in the alveoli, the CO2 levels are fairly low. So this time the diffusion gradient exists, but it's the other way around. So carbon dioxide will tend to diffuse down the diffusion gradient from the capillary into the alveoli where it can then be breathed out. And if this carried on for some time we would end up with the same amount of CO2 here and here and the same amount of oxygen here and here. But of course the blood moves on and the oxygen-rich blood moves away and blood low in O2 comes here again so the diffusion gradient is replenished so the process carries on and of course this air high in CO2 is exhaled and blood relatively rich in CO2 arrives again therefore the diffusion gradient is re-established and the diffusion carries on so it's the process whereby gases of different concentrations intermingle when brought here not into contact but nearly into contact through two thin membranes until their concentrations are equal throughout. This would happen if everything was static here but it's not. More blood comes, air is breathed out so the process carries on. So one example of diffusion in biology clearly vital to health. Now what I want to show you next uh, is a picture of some smoke molecules in a chamber of air. And remember the smoke molecules will be vibrating and the air molecules will be vibrating. And we'll actually be able to see the vibrations at a microscopic level. This is what's called Brownian motion after the chap who discovered it. But just before we do that, Let's go back and check on our jam jar. How are we getting on? That's been, what, five, ten minutes now? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I think you can see that all this top area now is just a, a pinkish colour. As the ink has diffused throughout the medium of the water, and at the bottom you can still see there's a little more red ink and the water is a little clearer round about that red ink at the bottom where the process of diffusion is still carrying on. 
So if it came back in a few minutes, that would be completely homogeneous. But we can see quite clearly at the top that diffusion has occurred due to the random collisions of water and ink molecules, making the concentration of ink equal throughout the water. What I'm looking at here is some uh, chalk dust particles in water. Now we actually tried to use smoke but we couldn't resolve it on the video screen so we're using chalk dust in water. <coughs> and of course the water is um, a collection of molecules and because the water possesses heat the water molecules are vibrating and that means that they collide with the dust particles of chalk and because the movement of the water molecules is random it means that sometimes there's more random collisions on one side of the chalk uh, dust grain than on the other side and the result is that I can see them vibrating this is called Brownian motion and as we've said the Brownian motion occurs because of the kinetic energy possessed by the water molecules which they possess as a result of their heat. So we can't see the water molecules vibrating, of course not, they're far too small, but we can see the effects of them. In exactly the same way as a boat on the sea is, is rocked by the waves hitting it from the, from the side. So let's look at the vibrations now in the chalk dust particles as a result of the random collisions with vibrating water molecules. Here we have a combination of particles but I think you can see here and here and here that, that they, are, they are vibrating. Now some of these bigger ones don't appear to be but the smaller ones which are small enough to be affected by the water molecules are randomly vibrating as a result of their collisions with the water molecules. So what we're actually seeing here is Brownian motion in action. So there we saw Brownian motion and that concludes what we're going to look at in terms of our study of diffusion. Next part of the study is osmosis. Osmosis is essentially a special case of diffusion. It's diffusion of water where there's a membrane in the way. And of course we have a lot of this in biology. Cells are surrounded by membranes. Capillaries are lined with membranes. So membranes and water are very important in biology. So osmosis, diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane. And let's start off by looking at a demonstration that I've uh, just set up. And what we have here is a YouTube system. And I've marked on, as accurately as I can, it's about right, the level of the water in both sides of the tube. Now what this is, is on this side of this central bit, there's water, but I've put quite a lot of sugar in it. So this is water and sugar. On this side, there's only water, pure water, with a little bit of colouring, so you can see it. Now between the two, there's a diaphragm made of this material. This is called viscin tubing and it simulates biological semi-permeable membranes. This tubing's got, this cellophane-like stuff's got very thin, uh, very small pores in it. So water molecules can get through, but larger sugar molecules can't get through. So between this solution and this solution, there is a sheet of this uh, semi-permeable membrane. In fact, you can see it sticking out there. So sugar and water on that side, semi-permeable membrane, pure water on that side. I'm going to leave that and we'll look at it in an hour or two and what we want to check is have these fluid levels changed. 